Hi everyone, I'm Tom Donnelly, and today I shall be showcasing the smallest subsection in my collection, which is the shaped disc. Showcase will be a regular series on this channel, uh, which is basically where I show uh, one or more records from my collection and tell you a bit about them. The shaped disc is a relatively new concept uh, in terms of the age of the phonographic record. Uh, the earliest records I could find of any shaped disc is the early 80s, 1981, I think around about, uh, which is actually where one of my records is from. So if anyone living around that time could tell me if there was a boom or a, a sharp increase in when they were coming about, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. As I said, this is the smallest subsection of my collection, uh, but the two records I do have uh, are personal favourites, so they are very special nonetheless. First up is this beautiful uh, Men at Work single featuring their most popular song, Down Under. This was a Christmas present from my mum last year, and it was one of my most wanted records at the time, and you can see why. The record itself is shaped like the band's home country of Australia, uh, which is also what the song is about. So as a record as a whole, uh, the record and the music combined, uh, it's perfect. The playing surface is 7 inches, uh, but it's actually cut from a 12 inch record, uh, which is interesting. Uh, usually, uh, shaped discs have a playing surface of 7 inches. Uh, occasionally, they do come at 10 inches, but they are usually more uniform, like the popular saw blade design, uh, which is uh, very common these days. Let's talk about the music itself, and I'll give you some tasty facts. In the charts around the world, it reached uh, number one uh, in the UK and the US, and no surprisingly, Australia and New Zealand. Also, it interestingly got to 97 in the Polish chance in 2018, so if any people watching are from Poland and may know why it went back into the top 100 in Poland, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Also became of great cultural significance to Australia, as it went on to be the theme song for Australia 2 Racing Yacht, and which went on to win the America's Cup, which I imagine is a yacht racing competition. It was also voted by Hunter Strong Industry Panel as Australia's fourth best song. And in the previous year's Olympics, they closed the Olympics in Sydney uh, by singing this song, uh, which further solidified its uh, impact on Australian culture. My personal thoughts on this song are actually positive. If you're the same age as me, you may remember it being used a lot uh, in memes. And in popular culture as well, it's been used for almost 40 years now. And when I first started collecting, it was a song that I wanted to get, and luckily, I got the best one. This record is fairly rare, but not too pricey. Um, my mum got it from Discogs.com, uh, which if you are new uh, to collecting, is a good place to buy and uh, catalogue your records. Uh, the prices, that's what pretty much every collector uses now to value their records, really. Now, at the time of recording, Christmas is right around the corner, and this time last year, uh, not too long before I picked up the previous record, I picked up this great, uh, oh, slipping out there, oh, that's not good. This great uh, picture disc slash shape disc. When I got this record, it would have just been before my first Christmas as a collector, and doing what I often do, I was scrolling through discogs.com, uh, uh, more about that later, uh, and I was looking for Christmas songs uh, on vinyl, and uh, I saw this one, uh, and for the price, I just had to get it. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I'd watch the old chart show on uh, Four Music of All Places, which if you're not from the UK, is basically the UK equivalent to MTV. Um, and at Christmas time, uh, I would be waiting for this song uh, to come on. Not only because it's a cracking uh, tune on its own, but as popular Christmas songs go, uh, none really are stylistically the same. Um, so it really stood out for me. Um, I just really like it. Uh, let's talk about the record itself. Uh, it's not only shaped like the previous record, but it is also a picture disc, which in my mind is more common than just being a uh, plain shaped vinyl um, like the previous one. Uh, another example off the top of my head uh, of something similar to this one 
is the Men Without Hats uh, safety dance uh, shaped single, uh, which I did see in the Vile Wrestling Place uh, in Athletics in Manchester's Northern Quarter. And I do regret not picking up when I saw it because it is a very cool uh, shaped slash picture disc record. On the record itself, uh, it features an illustration of lead singer Justin Hawkins, uh, accompanied by the logo uh, with the B-side featuring the whole band. Um, interestingly, uh, Justin Hawkins on the B-side, which is I Love You Five Times, uh, sounds a lot like Robert Smith from The Cure, another, uh, I'd say another favourite. The Dangs aren't one of my favourite bands, just this song, uh, but The Cure are a favourite band of mine. Uh, it's a very interesting listen, so if you've not heard the B-side, which you probably haven't, uh, I recommend you go check it out. Some more tasty facts for you. Uh, it was a hit straight away. It was released 15th of December 2003 uh, in the run-up for Christmas number one. But agonizingly, it never got Christmas number one uh, in the UK or Ireland. Uh, it got to number two in the UK, Scotland and uh, the Republic of Ireland. The number one in 2003 was the Mad World cover for the film Donnie Darker by Mad Clan Cruz and Gary Jules, if you remember that? Uh, which, if I was a darkness, I'd be pretty mad that that song uh, beat me to Christmas number one, considering it was first heard in 2001 and isn't even a Christmas song. But that's just how the men's pie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> Despite my love for this song, uh, my girlfriend's opinion lies on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, so my question to you is, do you like, love, or even hate The Darkness Is uh, Christmas Time Don't Let Bells End? Please let me know in the comments section below. As I mentioned before, uh, the price of this record was appealing. It was only about £10, including uh, postage, so for any, uh, any record like this, that's a deal, and it was also bought from Discogs.com as well. Uh, I'll also put links to the Discogs entries for the these two records in the description below, so you can check them out. Check them out. Well, there you go, and uh, that's that section uh, of my collection covered uh, pretty swiftly. I mean, in a way, I'm glad, and it's so small, so that I can tell you more about uh, these records that you might not have heard, uh, or you might not even heard, or well, you probably heard this one, but you might not have heard this one. Um, so you might have learned something, which is always good. You learn something new every day. Especially when you subscribe to The Hive. Um, as always, I'd like to hear your recommendations, specifically regarding shaped discs, as that was we was discussing today. Uh, so put them in the comments below. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more uh, vinyl and music-related content. Bye-bye.